everyone! I'm glad that you guys made it to the ninth week of our Java course. Now, last week we took a little bit of a detour into arrays and how we manipulate strings. Now, today we're going to be going back into objects and classes. Now, I know we're kind of going all over the place right now, but this will all come together when we actually start building a project based off of what we've learned. So, for now, let's get into objects and classes. So, I know that I just said we're learning about objects and classes, but what exactly are we learning? Well, first of all, we're going to be learning about, you know, objects and classes. Classes, well, we've seen classes before. If you take a look at some of the previous episodes, you will see in examples of code that you've seen the word class. Now, we're going to be talking about what exactly that is. Next, we'll be getting into objects and what an object is, as well as how these work with classes. And lastly, we're going to dive into methods again for a little bit. Specifically, we'll be talking about mutators and accessors. We'll also be kind of tackling the concept of constructor methods, but we'll be doing more of that next week. So let's get right into it. First of all, we have objects. An object is a group of variables that are packed into a single group that can be manipulated. So I just read that straight off the slides, but a good example would be a book. So a book contains specific, you know, variables. So for example, we have an author, which would be a string, a title, which would also be a string, and an ID number for the book, which would also, well not also, it would be an integer. Now, an object is characterized by its state and behavior. So that's the variables that make it up, as well as what the object can do. So here is my challenge for you. Think of an example of an object. Well, if an object has certain properties, then there are things all around us that have certain properties. So now my challenge for you is to simply think of one. I'll give you a minute. All right, your minute's over. So the object that I was thinking of was something like a bag of chips from a store. So it would contain an integer and a double, right? An integer would be the number of chips in the bag. And the price would be a double if you were buying it from a store. So I think that's a really great and basic example of what an object would be. Now let's get into classes. What is a class? Well, a class is a kind of blueprint, or you can think of it better as a template. An object is a single instance of this class. So for example, we have books. If you wanted to create a book object, you create it from the book class. The book class is a template that says, all right, we have an author, we have a title, we have an ID. Those are the required fields to create a book. And that's what the class will tell us. And that's where we create an object from. Now, the state of any given object is maintained in the data fields and instance variables of the class. And we'll get into that in a second because that probably doesn't make a lot of sense right now. So this slide is a good example of a very basic class. We just called it lamp. Now, this is a class and it has one instance variable. If I can just get the pointer really quickly. We have one instance variable and it's a Boolean called isOn. Now, this is used to mimic the function of the lamp turning on or off. So let, let's dissect this from top to bottom. First of all, we have this. And this method just doesn't have a return type. So what exactly is it? Well, this is what we call a constructor method. And we call this method whenever we're constructing an object in the main class. So for example, um, if I were to say lamp lamp equals new lamp in the main class, in a similar way in how variables would work. And we'll, get, we'll actually be coding this out once we get to the coding section. But if I were to make a new object, it would by default set is on to false. All right, so that's what that is so far. Now this method does have a return type, it's void. So we have void turn on. And here we're setting the instance variable is on to true. And then turn off sets is on to false. Now, this one's a little different. This is a Boolean. It, it has a return type of a Boolean and it gives us is on. So it'll give us whether a certain lamp is on based on, haha, uh, get it, based on, based on its, It'll give back its status based on what the instance variable of that object is. We'll get more into this when we actually start coding, and hopefully that'll give a better example. Now, last but not least, let's get into actual methods. So there are two new methods that we're going to be learning about today, 
and um, they're pretty easy once you get to understand them. They're accessors and mutators. So accessors are methods that get data about the object without modifying it. So for example, in our LAMP class, we have the check status. Now this isn't changing the Boolean variable, it's just giving us the Boolean variable. So it's not changing any of the variables in the object, it's just changing no, wait, sorry, it's not changing anything. On the other hand, mutators manipulate or change the data of the object. So if we come back here, we have turn on and turn off. And here we're changing the Boolean. So these two methods will be known as mutators. So in total, we have one constructor, two mutators, and one accessor. All right, so that's about all you need to know about methods. And now we're going to be talking about the difference between these two classes. Now, if you take a look here, they look almost exactly the same. But the difference here is that we have the constructor. The constructor is the same. We have the same Boolean instance, or rather I should say instance variable. But these two, turn on and turn off, is replaced with set lamp Boolean in. Now, the thing about this is that these two basically do the same thing because this turns on and off the lamp, and this one sets the lamp based on an input parameter. If you need to review on input parameters, I highly recommend you take a look at episode 7, where we go over that in a, a bit more detail. So we're setting is on to in, which is the input parameter. So in effect, we can turn on or turn off the lamp given the input parameter that we put. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now let's actually get into coding this stuff. So um, let, let me just go get coding, Brian, and um, we'll get straight into it. Hey everyone, Coding Brian here. The lighting is a lot worse, but I am back. And today we're going to be learning about objects and classes. Now, I find this really interesting because this is where we actually start learning about different files in Java. So let's take a look here. We have the main class and it's in the same directory as per usual, like last week and the week before last week. But now we're gonna create a new file for our new class. So let's go to the package that you know main.java is in or our main class. And let's create a new class. Let's call it LAMP. If we were to take the example from um, slides Brian's code, and let's just paste his code in there. So I believe that this code is actually a little bit more elaborate. We have an ID number for the LAMP, which um, I don't know if LAMPs actually have IDs, but um, I don't know what slides Brian was really giving me here. But here we have our typical constructor. Oh, no, we don't. All right, this constructor actually has a couple of parameters in it. Now this is a little bit interesting. So whenever we create a constructor, we can also set specific parameters to this. So we have lamp pool and set ID. Okay, let's see. Um, we have set lamp status, which is presumably whether the lamp is on or off. I think Slides Brian explained this earlier. We have our two accessor methods here. We have one that gives us is on and one that gives us an ID. So th this looks a little bit more complicated than what slides Ryan put on his original slides, but let's save this file and go back into our main class. Now you can switch between the Java files um, by clicking the top here. They're usually um, here. So let's go back to the main class here and let's create a lamp. So we have a lamp, um, here lamp one equals new lamp. Okay, oh goodness, my typing skills are very bad these days. Now if you notice there's an error here and if we hover over the error, it says, all right, the constructor lamp is undefined. Now, you're probably wondering, why is it undefined? Because clearly in our lamp.java file, we have a constructor here. Now, the answer is because we need our parameters, right? So let's see what this does. Boolean lamp pool, we set is on to lamp pool. So we're setting the instance variable is on to whatever we put in there. So let's say that this is false. And then we follow the same procedure for the ID. So ID equals set ID. All right. So let's say the ID here is um, 105. 105 is a good number. And if you notice, the, the error is gone because the, the constructor matches. It has two parameters here and it has two parameters that go in here. All right. So we have lamp one. We just created an object, a new object. And this object then has the properties is on an ID. And these have, it, or rather, lamp one has its own individual boolean int. Now if I were to create another lamp, so lamp lamp2 equals new lamp, um, let's say this one's true, and 106. All right, so now we just created a new lamp, and this lamp also has its own is on an ID number. 
So let's set some status lamp to false. So let's do lamp one dot set status or set lamp status, I think it was called. Yeah. And then we need a parameter. So let's set lamp status to true. Now, what happens when we set lamp status to true? Well, it should turn is on to true. And a really great way that you can actually check this is if you do control click and it'll give you, it'll, it'll take you to the method that's actually being called. So let's see, we have set status, set lamp status with a Boolean of in is on is equal to in. So we're setting lamp status and in becomes true because that's what we're putting in here. So is on for lamp one becomes true. All right. I'll repeat that again just in case that didn't make sense. So basically, lamp one, we set is on to true. All right, cool. So now let's say we wanted to print out, or yeah, let's say we wanted to print out um, lamp one status. So let's say Boolean lamp one status equals lamp one dot get status. Now, what does this do? Well, let's do control click. And we find out that it returns is on. So if we go through this in order, we're setting the lamp status to true. So we're turning lamp ones is on to true. And then we're taking lamp one status, which is true. So let me actually just comment that. So is on is originally false here. When we ch change the status, it turns is on to true. And then right now it's getting is on for lamp one, which is currently true. So let's do system.out.printline lamp one status. All right. So if we run this code, we end up getting true. Now, the reason why we get true is because it gives us is on. And the is on for lamp one is true. Therefore, we print out true. All right. So that's pretty simple as it is. Now, let's say we have this. Lamp two dot set lamp status to false, okay? Or this is lamp one actually, let's set this lamp two. And then lamp one dot set lamp status to true. All right, so we kind of just swapped the two. Lamp one's is on now becomes true. Lamp two's is on becomes false. So now what would happen if I print out lamp two dot get status? Well, this lamp two dot get status should give us false, right? So it's going to print out false. That's our prediction. And we're right because lamp two's is on becomes false because we set it to false at line 10. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now let's add another mutator to this class. So let's add a mutator to the lamp. Let's say we want to change its ID, which is you know pretty typical. So let's do void set ID. That'll be our method. And we need something to set it to. So let's put a parameter in here and say int um, input ID. So input ID will become whatever we put in the other or whenever we input something for the lamp. So let's say ID equals input ID. All right, that's pretty simple. So now if I were to backspace all this and say lamp one dot set ID, and now we can set our ID. Oh, first let's save this file. There we go. Now let's set our ID to, hmm, let's set it to zero, set it to zero. And now if I were to print out lamp one dot get ID. So now we're taking this, which is zero because we set its ID to zero and we're printing it out because lamp one dot get ID gets its ID. And in the line before that, we set it to zero. So if I were to run this, it would give us zero. All right, so that's basically about it for objects and classes, or at least rather the basics of them. So I think that slides, Brian, will now give us a conclusion and I'll be heading out. All right. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll hand it over back to, I'll hand it back over to slides, Brian, now um, before he, uh, he, he looks pretty uh, cranky now. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll bolt now. See you in a bit. Ooh, hey guys, I'm back. Uh, coding Brian really takes up a lot of runtime, but I'm really glad to announce that we've almost really hit the end of our Java curriculum, or rather the basic things that we need to learn about Java. So soon enough, we're gonna start getting into bigger projects, such as, you know, creating maybe a text RPG or something on the console. And we can actually create these using the knowledge that we already have.
Now, we're going to spend a couple more weeks getting into more complicated stuff with object-oriented programming, because right now we've only touched the surface. We've just gone over basic classes and methods, but we're going to get into extends and inheritance, as well as, I guess, polymorphism in general. So, I'm pretty sure you don't know what that is, I'm just throwing words around, but I'm really excited to see you guys progress in the future. We've only touched the basics, and I'm really excited to actually get into some projects so that we can really demonstrate our knowledge. So, with that being said, I believe I am out for this week. Um, next week, we'll be getting more into methods, objects, classes, and all of that shebang. And that's about it. Thank you for coming, and I'll see you next week. See ya.